Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to another interesting session from Economicspedia. So today's session is all about game theory. Yeah, it is a part of microeconomics, it's a part of mathematical economics and it is a very important part. And in that game theory, today's topic of discussion is the prisoner's dilemma. Now we all know this is a very important topic. Yet somehow uh, something happens that what exactly was the outcome of the prisoner's dilemma? What, um, how we can derive the prisoner's dilemma outcome? What exactly was the prisoner's dilemma is? So this type of small confusion still remains. So this session is here to help you clear all those doubts and uh, will make sure that you retain the concept. So what is this prisoner's dilemma all about? Now we all know prisoner's dilemma It's a game. It's a game between two players, player A and player B or row player or column player, whatever you want to put it like. Okay, so what's the basic, basic concept of this prisoner's dilemma? You always have to remember that the outcome that we get in prisoner dilemma, it is always a Now, why it is suboptimal? Because the outcome that we get in prisoner's dilemma here, I'm writing for short as PD, the outcome that we get in this prisoner's dilemma is definitely not our Nash equilibrium. This is the main thing that you always have to remember in case of prisoner's dilemma. That the outcome is not a Nash equilibrium. That means the players can do better than what they are ultimately choosing in this prisoner's dilemma game theory. So this is the main concept that you have to remember. Now why you have to remember? Why I'm going in such details? Because the questions that are going to be, it can be in an MCQ format. It can be in a subjective format. Uh, if it's in an MCQ format, the question directly goes like the whether state true or false, the outcome of a prisoner's dilemma is a Nash equilibrium or a suboptimal Nash equilibrium. You can call it a suboptimal outcome or suboptimal Nash equilibrium also. Since it is not the optimal Nash equilibrium, the players can do better than what they are doing at okay. present. So to discuss it in more details, let's take an example of a game and let's understand the game. We theory. have taken up this classic example of prisoner's dilemma. So we have got two prisoners. Prisoner A and Prisoner B and they have committed a crime. Now we have to get to the conclusion that whether they have actually committed or not. So therefore these two prisoners have been kept in two different separate rooms and they have been asked the questions and in that question if they both confess or don't confess what will be the probabilities, what will be the payoffs they are represented with the help of this game here. Okay, so let me just walk you through the game once. Suppose player A and player B or the prisoner A and prisoner B if they do not confess to the crime. Okay, suppose both of them are denying that no, we have not done the crime. And uh, understand this thing that none of the prisoner have an information, prior information of what the other prisoner is doing. Okay, so there are two independent players who are playing simultaneously. They are unaware of what the other player is taking the move or what the other player's strategy is. So if the situation is goes like that player A do not confess and player B also do not confess, then since they have committed a crime, the payoff is minus one and minus one. That means if they both says, no, we have not done it, then each gets a jail time of one year each okay so this is the first situation second situation suppose player a do not confess to the crime however player b confesses to the crime then the prisoner who does not confess is getting a jail time of three years and the prisoner who confesses to the crime is free to go interesting right all right so this is the situation if player A does not confess and player B confess, then this is the payoff minus 3 and 0. Who gets the minus 3? The player who does not confess. Now the same situation arises one more time if player A confesses to the crime. However, if player B does not confess to the crime, 
then again we have got a situation where the prisoner who does not confess is getting a jail time of 3 years again however the player who is confessing to the crime is free to go and lastly this is the payoff remains that if both the player confess to the crime then they both each will get 2 years of jail time that is minus 2 and minus 2 Okay, so I hope the game is clear to all of you. Alright, so if that is the situation, then let's move and let's find out the solution. Okay, so I'm going to take the help of this side of the board to make you understand. Suppose I'm taking first player A's move. If player A plays do not confess. If player A is not confessing to the crime. Okay, so do not confess. That means this is the payoff that is available to other player. Now tell me what is better option for player B to go for. Minus 1 or 0. That means if player A chooses don't confess. Then what will player B choose? Player B will definitely go for confession. Because if player B, look at this one. This is minus 1 and this is 0. So this is 1 year of jail time and this is 0 year of jail time. So which one is better? Of course it's 0, right? So player B will choose confess. In that scenario, what player A is getting? Minus 3. So player B is going for this 0. Alright? That means player B is confessing to the crime. Alright, now again, if player A confesses, suppose player A we have chooses confess, then tell me what player B is choosing. Again confess, right? Because this is minus 3 and this is minus 2. So 2 years of jail is better than 3 years. So B again chooses confess chooses confess so no matter what player a is playing player b is always going to choose confess because that way player b is getting better off so this is from player a's perspective now let's understand the game from player's b perspective that means if player b is the first player then what player a being a second player chooses let's understand that suppose we have player b who chooses first don't confess. Okay. In this situation tell me what player A is going to choose. Minus 1 and 0. So of course player A is better off if he or she confesses to the crime. Right. So confess. Again player B. Suppose chooses confess. Then tell me what player A is going to choose. So to player uh, A, the available options are minus 3 and minus 2. So, of course, minus 2 is better than minus 3. So, player A again chooses confess. Now, C. If player B moves first, then also player A is always moving towards confession. That means, doesn't matter what player B is choosing, player A will always going to choose confess. Same thing happen when player A plays first and player B comes second. Then also player B was choosing confess. So therefore we can find that this confess and confess that is minus 2 and minus 2. That means 2 years of jail to each prisoner. This becomes this game's equilibrium. But... The first statement in today's session that I have started is that the prisoner's dilemma outcome is a suboptimal Nash equilibrium. Look at the game once again. Minus 2 and minus 2. That means each person, each player is selecting to confess and ultimately if both the player confess then each player gets 2 years of jail. This is the outcome of this game. Let's go through the Nash equilibrium definition once again. What is this? 
Nash equilibrium is such a situation that it is not possible to make any of the player better off. I mean that should be the optimal position or optimal choice of the game or optimal outcome of the game. Now tell me, let's move to this game again. Is this the optimal outcome or is this the Nash equilibrium? I don't think so. Why? Because this is a situation minus one and minus one. Here, each of the prisoners are going to get two years of jail. Now think like that, which is better? Two years of jail or one year of jail? Of course, it's one year of jail, right? So this is the place where you have to catch that why it is a suboptimal Nash equilibrium and not an optimal Nash equilibrium. The prisoners can do better than this. They can choose to not confess and to not confess and they can get each one year of jail because that's the better choice. However, according to this game and according to the payoffs, the way they have been set, the outcome of prisoner's dilemma always becomes a suboptimal Nash equilibrium. Okay, so this is a very important thing that you have to remember whenever we discuss uh, prisoner's dilemma from the game theory. And there are many ways that have been given out in order to correct this suboptimality outcome of prisoner's dilemma. Alright, so this is a very short and crisp way that I have walked you through the important concept from the game theory that is the prisoner's dilemma. I really hope that this session was helpful to you. If it is helpful, show your support by hitting the like button and also press the bell icon. For any further query, you can feel free to contact us. The details are appearing on your screen through WhatsApp, through mail and also uh, write us below in the comment section which are the next topic that you want us to cover and if you're new to our channel make sure to subscribe to our channel and also press the bell icon so that you never miss any update from our channel of economics media thank you very much for watching i really hope to see you in one of my next sessions very soon thank you stay tuned